Welcome to NCIX Tech Tips. Today's episode is going to be all about Steam and how to use it to manage your games more efficiently and with less hassle. Now it's no secret I'm a huge advocate of Steam. Lots of great deals on games, very convenient, fast downloads, and the part, the, the coup de grace that makes my life significantly better is the ability to install Steam in whatever directory you want, and you can install your games simply by dragging and dropping the files and then using Steam to validate them to play them. So I'm going to show you guys how to do that. First, you have to go to steampower.com, click get Steam now, click install Steam now, and run the Steam setup wizard. When you're running the setup wizard, click next, click accept after you've carefully read the end user license agreement, you select your language. This part right here is the trick. So you select a destination folder of an external drive. Now that external drive, in our case, is going to be a Thunderbolt drive that looks just like this. So the advantage of running my Steam games off a of Thunderbolt drive is I get great performance due to the Thunderbolt interface and I get huge capacity because I can well, I can put as big a drive as I want there. And finally, I will have the portability to take my entire Steam library with me wherever I go. And I'm going to show you guys how to do that later on as well. So the first thing we're going to do is install Steam. Then we're going to show you guys how to do a drag and drop install of a game. And finally, we'll show you how to then take your Steam drive and run it off of a computer that's never even had Steam on it at all. Now that we've installed Steam to our Thunderbolt drive, we're just going to go ahead and log in. You will need to create an account. So that's used to authentic. Oh, and your account can be secured in, with a two-step verification. So I'm going to do that, and then I'm going to get logged in. In the library view, you can actually see all of the games that I have the option to install. So these are games where I own a license for them. And all you got to do is right click, click install game, it'll show you approximately how long it's going to take and it'll download the game from the Steam servers. It'll download the latest version and it'll automatically patch you to whatever you want. Now, that's not the only way to install Steam games though. If you have a friend who has the same game or if you have a backup copy of the game somewhere, I'll show you guys how to do a drag and drop install off of another drive. Rather than waiting for the internet, maybe you have a slow internet connection, you have a friend who can bring over a copy of the game, or you have a disc with the game on it, then all it has to do is apply the patches automatically. You just have to go to the Steam folders, then you go to the Steam Apps folder, and then into the Common folder, and that is where you will find all of the install files for your games. Now, that doesn't mean you have to run an installer, you just take the folder. In this case, let's do, uh, let's do Dragon Age Origins. So let's find out how, how much, this is a 34 gig, uh, you know what, that's going to take a little while and I'm going to have to wait in between shots. So let's install Crisis, just for the sake of argument. So that's a 6 gig game and it is going to install in a matter of probably about a minute and a half or two minutes here. Now our file is almost done transferring. And done. Now all we have to go do is go into this folder where Steam is installed, click Install Game on Crisis. It'll say Preparing Crisis Files for Install, Discovering Existing Files for Crisis. So it's not going to try and download them, it'll grab the most convenient possible copy. And while this is installing, maybe I'll talk about another cool feature of Steam. So that's Steam Workshop. That allows mod creators for games such as Skyrim or Portal 2 to actually automatically update their mods through Steam in addition to the game itself. Now we can view the game in the Steam library. It is going to run through the percentages really quickly here. And then the game will be installed in, yeah, there we go, 5%. Uh, so it's pretending to install, but this will be, be done in a couple minutes here. Faster than it would have been able to download 6 gigs, I'll tell you that much. Now this is the next magical part for me. Now that the game's installed, all we do is press play game, and when do we enter the CD key? No CD key. So now we've got drag and drop installs, we've got being able to install your games from anywhere no matter what, and not have to keep track of of disks or anything like that. There's also Steam Cloud, which in certain supported games remembers things like your mouse, uh, your mouse sensitivity preferences and all of that kind of hoo-ha. And then 
finally, I'm gonna show you my favorite personal part, and that is how this Steam installation, which we're running off of an external drive, can be quickly and easily ported over to another computer. So there's the social aspect of Steam, which is great, but this is the part that really seals the deal for me. So we're gonna close down Steam here. Close window, exit Steam. Now we showed you guys installing Steam from scratch. We showed you guys installing a Steam game off of another drive that has the game files on it, just using drag and drop. Now we're gonna show you the real kicker. And this is the one that I love, because remember guys, I run benchmarks all the time on lots of different machines. Back in the day when I had to install games off of disks every time I wanted to run it on a new system, it was horrible. So now I can carry my entire game library around with me on this one little external drive which I run off of USB 3. This computer does not have Steam installed whatsoever. So actually, hold on, I'm just gonna sort of minimize everything here. Just, uh, okay, well, fine. Steam, all I gotta do is go down to the steam.exe, run as administrator. That is really important. If you don't run as administrator, it will not work. And we're gonna do this in real time, folks, because this is how quick it is to take your entire Steam library and migrate it to a new computer, which is handy for a number of reasons. I mean, maybe you wanna keep all of your Steam games on a small drive that you carry around to school with you and you use on your laptop, and then you take it home and you run those same games on your desktop or whatever the case may be. And I figured out why this isn't working. So don't blame Steam for this, guys, but our internet connection shuts off at around uh, 10 p.m. or something like that on this computer. So Steam does need to be signed into the internet um, to work unless you're running in offline mode. However, you won't be able to run in offline mode the first time you run it on a PC because it has to actually validate things somewhat. So it's connecting the account now. We we're retrying the connection. There we go. Give it one more shot, guys. Do, 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 do. Connecting Steam account and it should go a lot faster this time. I'm sorry for the delay. Normally I don't like to uh, include these kinds of shenanigans in NCIX tech tips, but uh, there you have it. I think I've blathered on for as much as I can about how much I love Steam and how it's amazing. So there we go. Steam library, bam. I wanna run a game on this computer. Okay, so it has to initialize DirectX. It doesn't have a real graphics card in it for one thing, but I think you guys get the point. I'm ready to run my games. All of my favorite games are installed, and that is why Steam is awesome. So in summary, you've got drag and drop installs, the ability to install your games from anywhere, the fact that you no longer have to keep track of disks and CD keys, and finally, the fact that you can carry your entire game library around in your front pocket.